Here we go. Oh my god. Oh my god, was that in there? There it is. That's the uh, water, pre water pressure regulator valve right there. Now let's see what it looks like inside there. Ah, pretty nasty. It could use some red lime. Pretty nasty. 250 Suzuki water pressure valve and what it took to get this out one year ago one year ago this came off no problem this time heat gun I was gonna use a torch I was gonna use my little benzomatic but I didn't really want to go that much heat. I wanted to change this out. I've done my thermostats. I've done everything. And, yeah, see it's an inlet on the top here. Water goes up through a big hole here. A little small hole goes down this way. And then of course, coming in the back there's a big hole but what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna clean this out with some red lime and I still feel that at high speed for some reason I'm running a little hot at five grand plus and 83 to 87 degree Florida water. I'm running on my temp gauge answers. I'm running about 170 degrees according to my Lawrence gauge. And I feel 170 is a little too hot. Maybe I'm wrong. And this pressure water regulating valve on a Merc, on a Verado Merc, is a big deal. I believe they've got two of them. I pulled it out last year, but I couldn't get it out this year. So I'm going to swab some Ridlime descaler all in here and just clean out this whole opening. All right, look at all the scale on that. Right where the valve seats. This spring is pretty soft. So I am, I've got all new. What I do is I got, I got a toothbrush here and I'm soaking it in the red line and I'm gonna let that red line eat it up. Inside now, this tube up inside. See how far my finger can go up in there? It goes way in there. It's relatively clean, the actual tube. And I'll tell you, when I put this SOB back together, I am going to grease the living hell out of it. Because trying to get it off, I'm going to show you what it took for me to get this off. So a little red lime. And I'm going in here and getting out all the scale. The red lime is just softening it up for me right now. Letting it soften up any salt and whatever corrosion or I don't know what the hell this is here. It's just St. John's River as I always say. See, I've been running five grand or better and according to that stupid gauge that this boat or that this engine came with which i'm running like a hundred and up to 170 degrees i have new brand new thermostats and even putting in the new thermostats the engine run temperature at five grand 
didn't seem to drop at all, even when I put in brand new thermostats. Alrighty, folks. Well, I looked it up, and this is according to the exploded versions on boats.net. Now, I can also check this on my actual service manuals that I have on a CD. All right, I wrote it down. For a Suzuki 250, your T-Stats, you can buy ones that are called 50, small S, I don't know what that means, 50s maybe, Celsius, okay, and that equals 122 degrees Fahrenheit. Then they have where it says optional, 71S, maybe 71-ish degrees, I guess, I don't know, Celsius, okay, equals 159.8. Well, I am not going optional because that right there with the model number of that thermostat right there was what came with my engine, obviously. So that's what I'm doing. And it runs up to 122 degrees, obviously. 5,000 RPM or more, I'm running up to 170. So that's 50 degrees more than that. I don't know. I think this... I don't know. I wish somebody would tell me if they have a Suzuki 250, what they get in Florida in 83 to 87 degree water at least. July, it's, it's 87 degree surface temp where I'm, where I'm running. And right now, just the other day, the water temp was 83. Maybe a little 84 on the surface uh, by the afternoon. And I disregard this whole one right here, this optional. So that's my temperature, and I have checked these. I've checked my thermostats, and they do pop open in and around the 120-something degrees. So there you go. So my next thing was to do that valve. That was my next in line, I guess you could say, just to make sure that beyond a shadow of a doubt, is 170 really what I should be running when I'm up doing the screaming down the river. Well, here is the old parts, and you can see what it took just to get that off. I'll show you what I need had to do. With this piece stuck in the engine there, um, the little there was a tab here, just like this one, and it broke off. It's just a little piece of aluminum. What I had to do is go in there and with vice grips and just grab this edge like that. And I had to beat it down here with a hammer to get it going. And it started wiggling. It was really, really in there. And we're going to look at it a little bit more. Took The two bolts come out. You know, easy peasy. So, here's the brand new valve. And only thing I can see, literally, is that right here, that's cr the rubber around there has got a crack in it. And... It really wants to sit off to one side here very easily. But it works. It's working. Nothing was jammed or anything. So this is the new one. I'm trying to feel if it's about the same tension. Uh, very hard to tell. But you can see the, the old one. It's not all in that bad of shape. But because I knew I was going to possibly destroy this cap, I went to Boats.net and I ordered an another one. And I got two of the O-rings just because 
when I go to service this possibly again and just pull it out, I want to make sure I have a new O-ring to put on there. So I'm going to put the O-ring on there, and I am going to lube the living hell out of this. But look how nasty that gets inside there. Because what this does is it seats up in there like this, and it pushes, and that's the water that comes through, and it comes through here. See how when I push on that? All right, so this might not solve my problem. Maybe my engine does run at 170 degrees plus, possibly at five grand or more. I don't really remember it doing that when it was new. I just don't know. So I'm going to put these together. I'm going to save these for nostalgia. And I'm going to reinstall it. I'm going to roll this on there. You really don't want that O-ring binding. Do these equally. There you go. I guess that's pretty much it. All right, well, I'm getting ready to put the, uh, as they call it, the chaps on it. I always remember what my dad always says in the motorcycle world, all the plastic on like a big, you know, cruiser motorcycle. They always called that the Tupperware. So I always call the plastic covers on your outboard, I always call it the Tupperware. I left a lot of grease on it and I will be double checking this again probably in December, uh, probably when I you know, do my next little uh, flush, take out the thermostats, take out the uh, internal anodes, stick it in the barrel, pour in some red line with a little bit of water, dilute it a little bit, stick my 1680 gallon uh, pump in there and stick it up to the flush tube, flusher on the Suzuki and flush it out. And I'll pull that out again, that water pressure valve, and look at it. I wish uh, I knew, you know, somebody with a Suzuki like mine and around here, Northeast Florida, I don't care, Florida, period. I don't know why I'm getting, you know, like 170 degrees at 55, 5,000 RPM. I don't know, but we'll see, because there's nothing else I can do right now. The water pumps, you know, pumping really good. I mean, I don't think there's anything wrong with that. So, this is it. The water regulating valve. If you haven't pulled yours out in a long, long time, be prepared to grab it with some serious channel locks and it's not easy it's like i said it's not like the mercury's i watched the guy mercury has a big panel you pull off and they're this big in there on each side of the engine on a certain verado and mine's a little thing over there by the oil pan little tiny thing by the oil pan 
Okay, here's uh, the lower unit. I got the Tupperware off. And here it is, all greased up. There's your trim and tilt. All right. And all up in here is referred to as your entire oil pan. All the entire thing up in here. And I guess on the inside here, because this goes really far back, on the inside here is where the water comes in. Then there's a little outlet here. And I looked at the water schematic uh, on my service manual. And it really doesn't show much of what this does. So, but it's there. It was stuck and it hasn't been changed. So it needed to be changed. It was five years old running in that, that mud water. So this is your oil pan right there. All right, holds eight, eight quarts. Thanks for watching. Give it a thumbs up if this helped you. And uh, let me know what kind of temps you run if you're in Florida. You, what type of temps you run on a 26 foot boat. I mean, mine is as light as a 22 foot boat probably. But let me know. Let me know what you run at like, you know, five grand, 5,500, whatever because I'm just interested to know when the water's anywhere from, say, 83 to 88 degrees. Thanks for watching, and I'll see you on the next one.